Welcome back everyone to Ferris Sports Update. Time to check in with track and field and head coach Steve Picucci. And coach, uh, first of all, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks. Uh, it seems like uh, it's been a busy stretch here. Uh, last time we talked, uh, the Bulldogs getting ready for the for the GLIAC championships and then into the NCAA championships and uh, really a, a busy run uh, prior to the spring break. Yeah, there really is a kind of a, it just kind of ends real quick with the GLIACs and then you get one week and then you're all right into the championship. So it really not a, not any kind of a break for us. We just keep right on going. Bulldogs had uh, three qualifiers to the NCAA Division II National Indoor Track and Field Championships and a trip to Birmingham, Alabama. First of all, uh, uh, just talk about the trip to Birmingham and, and what the weather was like down there. Yeah, it was definitely an improvement for us. It was, like I said, it was you know good weather and I mean, obviously it's indoor track meet, but still it's nice to actually not have to worry about you know freezing while you're out there running. So it was a really great facility, really nice. Uh, NCAA did a great job putting on a championship festival, so the other sports and lots of activities for the kids to do as far as you know, interacting with the community and the other sports. So it was quite a quite a trip for us. It was a lot of fun. Part of the Division II Winter uh, Championships Festival. I know uh, you've been a part of those uh, in the past, uh, different uh, stages, either in the fall or the spring. Uh, uh, just talk about that festival environment and, and what that means to the athletes. Um, I think for the athletes, it just kind of gives them a little chance to kind of interact and see, you know see some of the other sports happen. What, what happened at Birmingham this year is all the sports were in one facility, so you had this, you know, Birmingham Crossplex facility, and you had wrestling and swimming and track and field all in the same area, so the kids could literally just walk across the hall and watch the wrestling championships or you know, walk down the other end and watch the swimming and diving. So it was, it was kind of neat. It gave, gave them a chance to kind of see you know, some of the other sports you know, kind of up close. Uh, big news for the Bulldogs, a national champion in the 5,000 meters and Anna Rudd, and uh, just talk about uh, her accomplishment and, and what that means to your program. Yeah, that was a, that was a huge step for her. Like I said, I think with, with Anna, it was, you know, we, we were trying to put ourselves in a position to run well, and then, you know, we kind of let the results take care of themselves. But, you know, the big thing for her is, you know, we had talked earlier, let's just, you know, give yourself a chance, run a smart race. And then, you know, when her opportunity came to make her move, she, you know, she didn't hesitate and she attacked and, you know, was able to kind of get away a little bit from the, the other two girls and that were in her lead pack and then uh, just kind of held them off at the end. And she actually pulled away at the end. So that was great to see. It uh, shows all the hard work she's really done over the last few years and just, and she's really starting to come into her own as she's gotten older and stronger. You mentioned kind of coming into your own the uh, last few years, kind of maybe in the shadows of Tina Muir, 11th time All-American uh, here for the Bulldogs, but certainly uh, making her own mark this season, uh, not only winning the national championship, but earning runner-up honors in the 3,000 meters. Yeah, Anna, Anna's a different, a different type of runner. Like I said, she, she does things, you know, kind of you know, similar to the way some of her other girls have, but, you know, she really kind of does, you know, she's a little different, you know, not quite your typical, you know, speed person. She's more of a strength and power type runner. So um, she's really been able to do it with her endurance and just her dedication over the last few years. And it really kind of gave her a chance to finally get in the limelight and kind of show what she can do. Um, and then just to do it on the national stage, I think she was, you know, was pretty excited. I think she was ecstatic just to kind of get both those champ performances back to back. Obviously, the 5K was her main focus and our main focus. Then to come back in a 3K and, you know, get second place was pretty awesome, too. What did it take for her to come back uh, just one night later and, and finish second in the 3,000 meters and, and maybe what wasn't her strongest event going in? Yeah, I think what, what it took with her was just kind of keeping her mind on what she needed to do and not, you know, kind of almost ignoring the fact that her legs were beat up and she was tired and she had a long night the night before. I mean, there was really no rest days in between. So, you know, a lot of girls are in the same boat, you know, but, you know, as hard as she ran, you know, Friday night to get the victory, it really was still in her legs. But, you know, she, she made some smart decisions in the race in the 3,000 to give herself a chance, you know, to be up towards the front. So I think that played into her favor. She was able to control it a little bit and kind of work the race into how she wanted it to happen. What does uh, that mean uh, in terms of your program and, and what you're trying to build here? Uh, second ever women's indoor uh, or outdoor uh, national champion in track and field. I think it just really kind of shows that, you know, we you know we really are kind of moving things in the right direction. We've continued to have success. It's not just one athlete or two athletes every year. We've you know, continually, you know, build success and have, for Anna to have that big breakthrough on the national scene really kind of showed, you know, especially in the indoor season when, you know, we're, you know, we're training hard, but we're still focusing on later in the year. So. I think it just kind of helped kind of give our program even more momentum than it already had. Obviously, uh, she wasn't the only Bulldog competing at the national championships. Jessica Pilling uh, in one of the weight events and Ryan Shute on the men's side. Uh, just talk about both of those and, and how they performed. Yeah, Jessica uh, was uh, just missed going to finals in the weight throw. So with you know her first time even being at the championships to, to come that close to making finals was you know was pretty exciting. I said you know a little heartbreaking because you're that close, but at the same time you know she came in ranked 13th and finished 10th. So. You know, she definitely improved on her ranking, but at the same time, she you know she felt a little disappointed. But I, we were, Larry and I told her we were proud of her. You know, you've never even been here before to to compete with the way you did, and you know, it gives her a lot of momentum going into outdoors. You know, as she you know she's a lot stronger you know thrower outdoors than indoors. So I think to make it and to finish where she did indoor and you know not maybe her strongest events really going to kind of lead to hopefully good things outdoor. 
and then Ryan kind of you know never been there before kind of a, you know a lot of a lot of different things going on in the championship race in the mile but he uh, you know he stuck his neck out there and went for it and like I said we kind of you know kind of didn't quite make it through didn't really exactly have what we wanted but at the same time you know we took our shot and like I said we'll we'll be ready for him outdoor as a student athlete, what does it mean uh, after a long season and, and so much training in the off season uh, to be able to compete at the national championships? I think it's kind of a validation of, of what we do and what they've been working for some of the, you know, for the last two or three years to get to that point and to really compete at that high level. I think it just kind of validates everything we're doing and kind of gives them maybe that extra motivation now to get up and you know battle the elements a little more and to kind of push a little harder every day. So um, it's it definitely kind of shows them that you know okay we're we're heading in the right direction. With Anna's uh, points at the national meet, obviously in two events, the Bulldogs placed 14th, and uh, hard to believe. But now uh, the women's team uh, among the top 10 teams in the country in terms of the the all sports rankings, I guess, in cross country and track and field at this stage. Yeah, it's kind of you know kind of weird to look at it that way. But when you put everything together, you know we're you know we're a really strong cross country team, and then we, you know have some girls that really can kind of you know put us put us in good position indoor. Like I said with you know Jess just missing the finals, we could have been you know even higher up. But you know Anna had an outstanding meet, and it really kind of showed and kind of showed the. The strength of you know what our team's about and the distances. Now you come back uh, to, to Michigan. The weather uh, still not not the best in terms of getting ready to go outside. But you move outside uh, to the outdoor season. Uh, uh, what's uh, the focus, I guess, now for the Bulldogs as you get ready for the outdoor season? Uh, right now we're just trying to kind of work on a few things and get really you know get kind of back into the swing of things coming off a break and really try and you know get the kids you know rolling again. And get, hopefully get on the track here and start doing a little bit of work. But you know right now is just kind of get back in the routine and then you know we start you know competitions here in a couple weeks. What are some of the big competitions? Obviously, the home meet, uh, April 6th, uh, weather permitting at Top Tiger Field. What are what are some of the big meets uh, you look forward to here in the spring? Uh, in the spring, we got a, a couple big ones. Well, actually, the week before our home meet, we'll actually go down to Raleigh and run in the Raleigh Relay. So that's a great competition. It's a great chance for our kids to actually go down and get in some good weather and maybe get an early, a good early time or distance in as far as, you know, that early in the season. It's a lot. It's kind of a, a mess up here to try and get a good, good meet in. But... You know, so that's kind of the big early season one, and then we really don't focus on much until you know end of April. Uh, Hillsdale hosts a big Invitational, and then um, obviously the GLIAC Championships in early May is kind of the you know the main focus. So we'll take our shot here at Raleigh, and then we'll just kind of really focus on the end of the year. Obviously, uh, we've talked about the home meet uh, April 6, and certainly uh, will be a nice uh, chance for the Bulldog fans to come out and watch uh, these athletes perform here on their home track. Yeah, it's like I said, it's a good chance for us. Not a real big meet, but at the same time, it's a good chance for them to kind of get in, compete in front of their family and friends and the alumni here, and. It's really kind of get on our home track. Well, uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, congratulations again, a national champion uh, on the women's side, and best of luck as you head to the outdoor season. Thanks, Rob. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.